This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. Side-by-side -side action. It's Jamie McMurray in the one inside of Brian Vickers in the five. Oh, we got oh, somebody got some trouble. Uh-oh. Damon Lusk into the wall. Caution's out. Hit the wall. He's spun and hit the wall. Out of two. You got yellow. You got yellow. You got it. No more racing back to the caution in NASCAR, remember? So everybody rolling out of the throttle here, and the safety truck's already rolling to the wrecked car. Boy, it's such a great thing to see. Did he... it's Lusk tough. is on the outside, and there just isn't any grip there. I don't think that Scott Wimmer, the 23, got in the back of him. I think he just simply lost grip up in that high line. Yeah, being up in the second groove probably isn't real. You know, there isn't a lot of grip up there, and... Uh, about the match, but they're just rough. Trouble off turn four. Tim Fidoa sliding through the trioval grass. Caution flags out. Luckily, he didn't hit anything. Tim Fidoa had a problem in turn four and wound up in that pretty little grass strip inside the, the front stretch. Let's check it out. Now, he did a good job here. This could have been a, a lot worse. You can see him. Second car just starts wiggling. He wrecked for maybe close to half mile, half yeah. mile, just didn't hit anything. <laughs> just down the grass and slides and he drives through all the logos in the grass. Not right now on the racetrack, so the extra pit stop to take on a little bit of fuel has not hurt them uh, that badly as far as track position. He gave up third for the pit stop. Got a car sliding up to the top. Of the oh, he's going around. Caution. Okay, just put it in gear and go. Now don't too fast, Ron. You got to get it going straight before He's you put it in gear and go. Yep. Mm, loose. There's not a lot of grip up in that outside lane for the two car of Hornaday. I don't think there's a lot of damage to the two. Do you, Jimmy? No, I don't. He may have just touched it. Um... I mean, it looks like the car settled into the track loose. He chased it, obviously, to the top, and he too falls so far back. Did they pit again? Um, now Jeff Green, you talk about? Yeah, he must have pit. Yes, oh, he yeah. trouble. trouble. The car in the wall, two of them in the wall. Jason Leffler and Brian Vickers, the championship leader. Oh, man. And Vickers' car is not going uh, back on the racetrack today. I don't know no. what happened. I don't know if somebody got into me. I... Dave? Okay, he just caught the end of that transmission. He said first, I am fine. And now they had just pitted, put themselves way back in the pack because they were still working on that loose condition. They made a long pit stop, adjusted on the shock on the left rear, and put tires on the car. But he said earlier on the radio, when I'm in traffic, this car's got the devil in it. He's in the top lane. There he is on the outside, and it just goes in the corner, and a lot Double of dirty air, and, the, in there. and Leffler just kind of spun to avoid he backed off the throttle quickly which spun the double zero out so far today here at the kansas speedway he has led 94 of 112 laps now 95 of 112 and he's out in front by two and eight ten seconds and the caution is coming out for the 22 blake mallory blowing up hmm. and he did fifth caution of the day So here he is with four fresh tires back in front already. Whoa, trouble turn four. Tim Fidoa again. Another long slide off the corner down into the trioval grass. Almost on top of his old marks. Yeah. And guess what? That keeps her going That's once again. Kind of consistency. <laughs> what did Yogi say? This is deja vu all over. That led Sauter in. Uh... Casey Mears on the lead lap, put us one lap down behind the leader, so we need to thank him. That's right, Larry Mack. Thank everybody. Casey can't Daddy, got a piece of come in and, and, um, Is there anything we can do? We got time. It looked like the 29 was around the right rear of the 12 and pulled him around sideways. And the 38, I think, gets into the 12 here. Yep. Yeah. There's nowhere to go. Just kind of bulldozes them out of the way. Yeah. These noses are not made to be bulldozers. We're back in Kansas. Trouble in turn four. Johnny Sauter in a heavy crash. Trying to extricate himself from the car.
And you see he walked away from his radio hookup, but he was not worried anything about that. He was just worried about getting out. Big crash. Mm-hmm. Car's full of fuel. Butter. I don't know if he and Mike Wallace got involved or not. But. I don't think so. I, I was looking up there, Alan. I think he just lost a car by himself. And we see the fire inside the trunk, which sets off the fire extinguisher. And I think it worked. You're it's in the last five that he's run. One at Bristol in August. He and Bobby Kennedy have uh, has sort of ramped up Michael's Bush Series organization. Yeah. And and Bobby moving on from this team at the end of the season to run a Craftsman truck operation for Michael's brother Daryl next year. But uh, Michael talks very freely, giving giving much credit to Bobby Kennedy for what he's done to build this Bush Series organization up into one that every time Michael gets into the car, he knows he's got a chance to win. Yep. And I, I really think you've seen a lot of the Winston Cup influence come over into Michael's Bush car and also in the Kevin Harvick's Bush car, Brian Vickers' Bush car. They, those guys have a little bit of an advantage knowing what's going on on the cup side, and it's, it pays off. I mean, we're learning so much on the cup side, and if you can take some of that to the Bush side, you know, you're going to have a good advantage. And these guys have been doing their work and applying it to the Bush car, and all, it doesn't always apply. I mean, it, it is a different race car, a different engine, different wheelbase, and it's tough to get it to apply. Matt, you must have something there. Well, Benny, talking about Bobby Kennedy and leaving at season's end, they have four more races together, and Bobby told me this morning they would love to run the table and win all four. This is a brand-new race car. They tested earlier this week, Monday and Tuesday, at Atlanta. He said it was lightning fast, so they cannot wait to take this race car, which they hope in less than 10 laps will be a winning car in this debut to Atlanta and go for two. Saw that race for position there, Greg Biffle and Kevin Harvick. Five laps to go. And I tell you what, Bobby Hamilton Jr. Oh, oh blew it right front. Blew it right front. The uh, 99 did. Michael did. No, oh, my goodness, the race leader. Five laps to go. Oh, man. And they will not probably stop it under red, no right? Caution, but no caution. Caution hasn't come out yet. It definitely will. It has to now. He stopped on the race, off the racing surface, but inside the corner. Michael's getting out of the car. Now the now caution there's... comes out. Oh, so, so much heartbreak. That's unbelievable. It's like Darth Vader. Junior was right behind him. That's the shot I saw, and I said, man. And I started to say Hamilton Jr.'s gaining on the 99 about that time, and then that right front tire <sighs> disintegrates. That's the first right front problem we've seen here, this mm -hmm. track. This weekend, I should say, maybe not. Not ever, but this weekend. Yeah, certainly not ever. We've, we've had that here before. Earlier in the day, everybody forget about it. All right, here we go. Pace truck is off. It's somewhere in there. Somewhere in the vicinity of. Yes. Okay, good start, good start. Hamilton Jr., David Green, Greg Biffle, Kevin Harvick, Jason Keller, the top five. One lap to go at Kansas. Green to the inside. Oh, oh, oh. The Junior's in trouble. to shift or ran out of gas. They have not called for the caution. So they'll race back to the finish line because of where Hamilton Jr.'s car is. They're going to let him race back to the stripe. David Green is going to pick up the win. It is, from what I understand, the rule is not supposed to happen that way. I'll be very interested to see how this plays out. Third win of 2003 for David Green, and they get the caution flag at the finish line. Here, here's the thing. All right, Mark, go ahead, Matt. They asked Bobby Jr. what happened. He said, dude, it fluttered. Mm. Gas or vapor locked? Vapor locked. Mm. And, you know, as cold as it is, you wouldn't think, but there's so much underhood temperature in these cars that it just it boils that fluid. Marty. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. This has been a presentation of TNT Sports.